today we're gonna make an easy gravy from turkey pan drippings. You could do the same thing with chicken drippings. It gives you a nice, rich, robust, voluptuous gravy that is silky smooth and not too heavy. It is just perfect for topping biscuits or turkey or chicken or Thanksgiving, obviously. And it's easy enough to pull together at the end of the meal as soon as the turkey or chicken is done cooking. And it's the perfect topping to finish off your dinner. If you're enjoying this video, be sure to hit the subscribe button below and click the bell icon to be notified every time I post a new and delicious recipe. Let's get into it. So gravy. Um, we've got obviously our roasted bird in the background, just resting. And we are gonna take all of these pan drippings and then we're gonna make a rich, delicious gravy. Um, it's going to be seasoned with the things that we seasoned our turkey with. So if you want to check that out, that's up there. It's going to have some herbs in it. It's going to be, oof, be great. Um, I did go ahead and I'll show you here. I did skim out these like solid kind of congealed bits. We don't need them. So I'm just going to discard these. You would just have to strain that later. So what we are going to do is take our whole pan, whole, whole guy right here and we're gonna pop it on a burner. Probably down two burners, these guys right here. Um, I'm gonna turn those on kind of medium. I'm gonna scrape up any browned bits. You can see that there's some in there. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and add a bit more stock. Now you can use turkey stock or chicken stock. Bonus points for homemade chicken stock. Um, if you are a badass and you have homemade turkey stock, like, wow. <laughs> goals. So we're going to go ahead and just kind of, it's already, already bubbling, which is awesome. Go ahead and add about, it's like about a cup of additional chicken stock. There's some water, there's some stock that's already in my roasting dish. So while this is doing its thing, I'm going to get my pan, my pot to make the gravy. You could absolutely make it in your roasting dish. But like that's such a huge surface area and I'm not about trying to whisk and making a roux in like this giant pan. So no gracias. I'm going to get myself a strainer. Careful not to splash yourself. It is hot. As I splash myself. Okay, so we've got a nice bubbly situation. There's no more brown bits on the bottom. Um, and that was the whole point of this shebang over here. So I'm gonna take my whole pan very carefully. And remember, it is still hot from the oven as well. So, and then we are gonna pour it into our measuring cup, fitted with a strainer. Now this is gonna catch any of those weird bits of fat, um, solids, and also any of the herbs that, you know, decided to stick about. All right, now we need to skim the fat off of the top of here. We want about a quarter cup. It is easy enough to just do with a ladle. So um, you wanna give it a moment to separate. It's, most of it's gonna separate immediately, but it will still continue to, you know, to kind of rise, especially if there were some that were a bit more emulsified when we were boiling it. So, all right. So be careful because obviously this fat is hot uh, and then I'm going to put it directly into my little measuring cup here. Um, the best way to skim fat is to allow it to, to kind of press below the surface and then allow the fat to fall into your ladle. Um, this will help you, you know, just get the, only the fat because it kind of like comes over the surface before the stock does. This is a great way to skim stocks as well. Um, you have to be kind of patient and usually you can see the difference like visually between the fat and the, the stock. Okay, so that's all we actually need for our roux. So we aren't going to need any of the additional butter, um, but I am going to continue to skim this and um, because we don't want extra fat in our, our gravy. You want uh, to end up with about two cups of the the broth liquid so it looks like we're gonna be 
really right around there. If you needed to add a little bit more chicken or turkey stock to it, then that's, that's what you should do. <laughs> Two on the money. Yeah. All right, so we've got our beautiful dark brown turkey stock right there. We've got our turkey fat from the drippings, but also a little bit of butter that we basted our turkey with. So we're gonna take our fat. You could use butter if you'd like, but why waste this, right? So we've got our fat. It's already melted, but we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna kind of get our burner going. We are gonna make a roux. So I've got equal parts flour, so this is obviously a quarter cup flour. And then I've got a flat bottom whisk. They have you know, the other kind of whisk, flat bottom whisk, that has like the, um, the kind of like you know, curly cues around it. That will work too. Um, or you can use a regular whisk. So go ahead and whisk this really nicely. Try and get all of those lumps out that are in there. Unlike my white cheddar mac and cheese, we are going to encourage browning here. We want a nice dark wood. We want a beautiful, rich body base for our stock in which we're gonna pour our browned turkey stock. And it's just gonna make a really voluptuous uh, gravy. It has to boil at least a minute, right? You want the flour taste to, to cook out and you don't want any of that, like you just don't want any of that raw flour taste or that raw flour feel in your gravy. Um, but also we are gonna cook it a little longer than a minute because we want a nice brown brew. All right, so we've got, it's been a minute, um, and we're just waiting for it to brown just a little bit more. It's got a nice little bit of a golden brown hue to it, uh, but I want just a little bit more richness down there. All right, she is looking bold and beautiful and browned, and we're gonna take and add a, just about a half a cup of our stock. Ah, careful the steam. You wanna add it a little bit at a time. You don't wanna overwhelm it. You want to kind of incorporate the stock a bit at a time. It'll like slowly loosen. Uh, we'll add about a half a cup more. My whisk is getting very hot. <laughs> Very warm. So you want to, what we're trying to do is make sure that there's no lumps. So when you add your stock too fast, not only does it get loose, but then you're going to have lumps in your gravy. And no, that is a strong no-no. Just no. So we'll go ahead and add a little bit more at a time. You can see it's starting to loosen. Um, with whisk because this is burning my hand. All right, and then we can just kind of slowly add in the rest of our, our stock here. Pretty smooth, it's a nice, it's like, you know, thinner, but consistency, so it's not going to clump as it would before when it was just straight fat and flour. Now, it's thin now, right? You're like, what are you doing? This is stressful, and I'm like, I know, but it's okay. We are going to thicken this. We're going to boil it and thicken it down to this, you know, the thickness that you want your gravy. So go ahead and just kind of let this kind of sit over here on low. You don't want to scorch it. That's not what we're trying to do. That's it. We are going to let this boil and thicken. Um, we are going to give it a taste in a second and make sure we don't need to adjust seasonings. Um, I didn't really salt much, so we're going to add, probably add a little bit of salt, a little bit of black pepper, and. Uh, We'll go from there. Okay, salt. Just a few cracks of black pepper. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my grinder down. I had it kind of uh, less fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of finely grate some or crack some pepper in there. All right, I'm gonna give it a taste. Wow, so rich. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit more salt to my counter as well. <laughs> Yum, yes, beautiful. So all we're doing now is we're letting it 
taken a bit, um, and then it'll be ready to serve. If you do make it ahead of time, you might want to thicken it a little less than you would like to serve, uh, and then go ahead and you know reheat it. You can add a little bit more stock as necessary um, at, while you reheat, and uh, no love will be lost. This is probably where I'm gonna leave it for, you know, because it's gonna thicken a little bit as it sits, uh, and I can rewarm and um, reheat it as needed, but I'm not ready to serve it right now, so I don't want to, uh, I don't want it to be so thick that it's like gloppy. Ew. Ew. So we're gonna try and pour just straight into here. Yeah. Feeling good about my pouring skills today. Boop. Ah, yes. Wow. Oh, one drip at the end. Womp womp. There she is. And that's it. Now you've made an easy gravy from pan drippings. You could do the same thing with chicken uh, after roasting a whole chicken. And it's a thick, rich, robust gravy that has all the flavor, but isn't too, you know, isn't too heavy. You could go ahead and obviously this is ready for Thanksgiving, like right now, um, or any sort of chicken or turkey dinner, or you could go ahead and make up a batch of my buttermilk biscuits and <laughs> you've got yourself a hearty breakfast coming up. Um, really, it's just whatever you want to do with your gravy.